When I was absolute beginner in programming, the way how programming tutorials and classes used to get started is first you spend months in learning the basics and after that you print a whole lot of patterns with stars, with alphabets and with numbers and that's it. That's pretty much it how you learn programming. Now although learning all these things are very basic component of mastering a programming language, but where is the fun in that? And obviously if you take out the fun element out of anything, it becomes boring and nobody does a thing repetitively and with the same enthusiasm if the thing is boring. Now talk about making YouTube videos or writing programming or hitting the gym or even playing basketball. If you take out the fun element, it's not fun anymore. Now I always like to keep the fun element inside any programming language that I'm teaching or even I'm learning. And one of the way by which you can insert this extra fun in Python is through automation. And not just any automation, the web automation. It's not really a fancy thing, but it's going to give you so much of the joy and pleasure inside that you're going to keep doing it. You want to let, I just want to keep doing it. In the web automation, there are so many things you can do. One of the core essential thing is through the Selenium. Selenium, although is a very powerful thing and you can use it for doing various kinds of automation testing, but you can also do it for fun elements and fun things like having a script that can log you in into Facebook or Instagram or can take whatever the updates are there on Instagram and can show you on a terminal and a whole bunch of other things that you can do with Selenium. So let me give you in this video a brief tour of how you can have Selenium and can do web automation for fun and for pleasure. I'll be using Selenium to do some of the basic automation which is absolutely fun. And let me show you a couple of commands before we get started. So first and foremost open up your terminal and then Windows users you really want to type just pip and Mac and probably Linux users as well you want to type on pip3. So we're gonna simply say install Selenium. There we go. So Selenium this is how you install it. It's absolutely simple to get started. Pip or pip3. Again, I want to point this out, Windows users, just pip. Now in case you are on a Mac, you might need to have a sudo as well. In some cases, it might not allow to have a permission, especially on the Catalina. Then one more thing that we need to have installed on our system is gonna be web driver. Because we are doing web automation, it is required that we have some kind of web driver that can open up our Chrome or maybe Firefox. So I'm gonna show you both of them. So if you'll just search on the Google about the Selenium Chrome driver, uh, just a little bit up at the bottom, you're gonna see this GitHub link. So you really want to open that one here. And on that, where is that? There we go, <laughs> this is here. So you can see this is how they mentioned that how you can use the different kinds of drivers and you can have a quick, quick installation guide here. For the Mac, it was really simple. It was just about a brute tap and brew cask and this whole big command. Actually, I didn't need to use this one. Actually, uh, this one is pretty good. Brew cask install Chrome driver. That's all for me. In case you are in Windows, I am pretty sure you're using chocolatey. If not, why are you not using it? Just install chocolatey and simply say choco or choco install Chrome driver. So that's pretty much it. And similar for the Linux as well. Make sure you have this because without this, things are not gonna work. And again, installing chocolatey is pretty simple on Windows, just next, next, I agree, okay, yes, stuff like that. Okay, now what we're gonna do, the plan is really simple. I want to open up the website uh, youtube.com and I want to pass on a simple query on that. So there's a search box at the top and I really want to type my name and hit this button, but through the script. So it's not really a rocket science, it's pretty easy. Uh, let's open up a Python file. Just open up any empty Python file. I have named it as automation.py. I have stored it on my desktop. Nothing fancy, pretty easy. So let's go ahead and do that. So first and foremost, what we really want to do is we want to have this Selenium, which we have installed. So we're gonna simply say from Selenium, I want to import these web drivers. So let's go ahead and say, hey, web driver, there we go. Now, once we have this web driver, we can actually use them. So let's create a variable. We're gonna call this as simply driver. This is gonna come from the web driver dot. Now comes the interesting thing. Since I have just installed the drivers from the Chrome, I'm gonna just create an object of from that here. In case you want to use, let's just say Firefox, the, uh, the web driver name is Gecko. So you might want to install that. I'm just happy and fine with the Chrome itself. And again, installing the driver is necessary. It's not like you have Chrome installed, you can just get away with that. No, installing the driver is necessary to automate. 
Now coming up interesting part. Now you want to make a request. So this driver is capable of making variety of requests, get, post, put, however you want to say. I'm gonna simply make a fire up a get request. Now where this get request is gonna go, https colon slash slash youtube.com. So this is where I want to fire my request. And uh, that's pretty much it as of now. So I'm gonna just save it. Come on, don't show me these error messages. And what I will do is I will run this file here. Again, running the file, there are a variety of ways. However you want to run your file, totally up to you. For me, it's gonna be simple Python 3 and then the file name which is automation.py. Once I hit that, it's gonna load up a browser which somehow goes on to a other screen. But again, this is uh, gonna be the browser that we are having. Okay, looks nice. So as of now, this is working nice. And very quickly, you can see that Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, now let's go ahead and do some more interesting stuff. Actually, we can do that just right here. So I want to copy something here. So right click on the search box, click on inspect and select this element. So just click on this teeny tiny guy and click on the search box. This shows that this input box is selected. You simply want to right click, copy and I want to copy XPath. In this case, the full XPath is not required, only the XPath will do. Again, it depends a bit more detail talk about how these XPath actually work, but right now, I think this is a fun exercise here. So now, uh, I'm gonna store that into a variable. I'm gonna call this as search box. It is very important that you name your variable nicely, otherwise it's gonna be hard to find. Then this driver has a lot of options to find elements. So we are gonna use find by XPath, find element by XPath. There we go. And I simply want to paste my XPath into these two quotes, which is a random string. We haven't talked much about the XPath on this channel. I'll probably make a video on that. Okay. Once I have this search box, now I want to type something into this search box. So I'm gonna simply say search box and search box dot send keys is used to type just like that. So pretty simple things to remember, isn't it? And I want to type, of course, my name here because that's what my channel name is. So it's gonna be easy to find if I can write my name. Come on, that's too much. There we go. Finally, I have written my name. Okay, so that part is all done. I can easily find a search box and put some things into the search box. But I want to simulate click as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, where is my browser? There we go. And I want to click on this one here. So I need to create another variable. I'll just select this one and make sure you're selecting the button. Right click on this button, copy, and I want to copy XPath. Moving back onto this. So this one is search button. And again, search button can be uh, find by similar things. So we're gonna simply say driver dot find element by XPath. There we go, XPath again. Okay, looks nice. And looks like I have got the search icon here. Uh, let me just try it one more time, hoping that I am selecting the right element. Selecting the right element is important. So copy, copy XPath. Make sure you are actually copying the exact XPath. Don't make a mistake in that. Okay, there we go. And paste that. Yeah, I copied the same thing. Okay, moving further. Now, what we want to do with this search button is we can actually fire up a method that is gonna be simply click. And just like that. Really, really simple stuff. And that's pretty much it. We have got, we can separate them up here. On the first line, we are we are firing up a get request, then we are searching a search box, sending some keys into it, then we are looking for a search button and we are sending a click automation there. Really, really simple one. So I'm gonna just save that and let's try it one more time. And I want to automate uh, this one here. And there we go, it opens up the browser. And there we go, it loads the browser types and there we go. Really simple, nothing much fancy, but it's actually very interesting after that what you really want to do. You can wait for a few seconds so that response is complete. Uh, you can get a list of all these. You can get an entire list in an array of all the titles up here. So yes, this can be done in a very, very extensive way. But I think these things actually makes me super interesting all the time that I'm able to do all these stuff through programming. I just love that part. Now there are two very important things that I want to tell you. 
Now there are two final notes that I would like to mention here. One thing is explore a little bit more in depth about Selenium and you're going to enjoy a lot. Make sure whatever programming you are learning, make sure you just apply them in doing your daily task. It's gonna make him absolutely fun. So that's thing number one. And the thing number two is make sure you hit that subscribe button because it gives me a lot of pleasure and it, it is just a fun thing for me. So make sure help me to enjoy making these videos as well by hitting that subscribe button and I'm gonna surely catch you up with another awesome video. Don't just print the patterns. Make sure you are keeping that fun alive in the programming. It is very, very essential. When words are said, we'll regret. I can see